Big shout out to today's sponsor, Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the easiest way to buy life insurance. I've been doing this for a while. Sometimes a product comes in and just kind of blows me away. And that's what happened with this. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Q Acoustics 5020. This is a new Q Acoustics 5020. You may know the 3020, the 3020i, the 3030. That is basically their affordable line. This is kind of in the mid tier. They also have the Model 30, which I have here in the house as well. Those come in around 1300. This comes in around 900. Not a cheap speaker by any definition of the word. However, it's still under $1,000. There's a lot of technology, the speaker, that some of the other ones don't have. And frankly, it sounds really, really good. Huge thank you to today's sponsor, Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the easiest way to find affordable life insurance. So run on over to policygenius.com slash cheap audio man and get this show on the road. Most of you watching are between the ages of 30 to 60, which means probably somebody other than yourself depends on your income. You know, to eat and put shelter over your children's heads. Policy Genius is a great way to get started and find the policies that are right for you. They wanted to make shopping for life insurance easy online. All you have to do is type in a few things about yourself, where you're from, height, age, things like that, and then poof, a whole bunch of awesome options come up and you can pick the one that is right for you. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 a month for $1 million worth of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. So don't wait, run on over to policygenius.com slash cheap audio man and get this process started and get it over with and go to bed tonight with peace of mind that if something terrible happens you're abducted by aliens it's okay because your house is going to get paid for the kids get to go to college and the dog's going to get the bionic eye that it needs policy genius go check them out policygenius.com slash cheap audio man but let's talk about soundstage and imaging <laughs> This speaker was a quick turnaround for a video because they released this at Axpona, which I was actually at. I got them about, I don't know, a week, 10 days before Axpona. I put them out in my living room. I had the RMC1L, which is a surround sound processor, feeding an XPA Gen 2, both by Emotiva, and then going out to these. For my music listening, I used Direct, and I actually set these to large so there was no crossover going into these things when I had them in the, the living room. Did that for about a week. Then when I came back, did some hardcore near field listening right here in the office with a couple of different systems. The J2 from Gishelli Labs was always running DAC duty. Then it went into the Schget Saga preamp and then into the G-Horn which is the Schitt low power amplifier. I also ran them with the J2 into the PT2 into the A1 monoblocks from Emotiva. And finally, the Schitt Tears. Let's get back to soundstage though. One of the things that I noticed with music especially was just how much higher the stage was than the actual speakers. I was at ear level. With most of the music, it felt like it was about a foot above the speakers. I was also watching Cocaine Bear, Cocaine. Great movie, if you haven't seen it. It's a very kind of tongue-in-cheek horror slash comedy monster movie. It was really fun. It's a fun movie. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. I think it's on Peacock or Paramount Plus. I can't remember. This did an outstanding job of throwing things and placing things in space around my living room. And it's my big living room. For music, I felt like the center imaging was very good to the point where I had to, again, Check to see if the center channel is on. That happens to me a lot with a speaker that images well. I would not say that this speaker is forward, so I don't feel like the mid-range leans forward or vocalists kind of come forward. What this speaker really does well in soundstage and imaging is the depth of the stage. 
And we'll talk about that more, but the separation of instruments, especially in the mid-range and upper bass, is really spectacular, and I think it lends itself to placing things in space uh, very, very well. The recording is probably going to be the thing that impacts soundstage and imaging the most, but these speakers do have the chops to really communicate that recording to you. Let's talk about bass. <laughs> For the speaker, Q Acoustics has designed, have designed, I don't know, a new woofer. So there's a bunch of technology. You can go check out the specs for yourself. I'll link them in the description, or at least check out the new woofer design and why it's better. These go down to reported 53 hertz, which I really appreciate about Q Acoustics because they never overblow their bass roll off. And I found that with some Q acoustic speakers, even though they'll say their speaker rolls off at 60 Hertz or 53 Hertz, which isn't terribly low, but that the speaker actually sounds like it goes down deeper. So they are very conservative with their roll off. However, this is not a bass monster. The bass that is there is incredibly clean, incredibly separated out. You know, you're right by Nirvana, the Bass line in that song is very thick and boosted, and it's gonna sound pretty strong in just about any system. But with the Q Acoustics, it just felt nearly leathery. I know, how does something sound leathery? Thick, purposeful, it was plucky, the bass drum was really just impactful. And clean, 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 clean. It was really interesting to be able to visualize those instruments through these speakers. Wow, by Beck, let's see, what was it? At the 25 second mark, you can hear it, doo, doo, it goes down even deeper. Now, while it didn't give the entirety of that bass hit, it did give you an idea that is at least there. So in a big room, you're gonna need a sub, especially if you're running home theater. Near field, maybe not. We'll get into that in the final thoughts. Let's talk about mid-range. <laughs> If you are new here, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Almost 700 videos, 690, I think this is gonna be 691. Chances are there's something here for you. Turntables, amps, DACs, home theater, headphones, just about everything. So please like this video and subscribe. mid arrange Killing Strangers, Marilyn Manson's voice seemed a little bit cooler, but it didn't seem abnormally thin. So it felt believable. But still, it didn't have that romantic, lush mid-range for male vocals. Mumford and Sons and Baba Mall. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Baba Mall. Anyway, acoustic guitars were separated out. Again, the vocals were a little bit thin, but the one thing that stuck out to me in the mid-range was the backing vocals, how just separated they were. That's the thing about the speaker. You can really start hearing things that you probably won't hear on other speakers just because how clean it is. That could be to do with the point-to-point -point bracing. Q has always been really good about the bracing of their speaker and keeping the cabinet inert. And sometimes I can't really say, well, because the cabinet is inert, it separates out the instruments. Because the tweeter and the woofer are redesigned, it separates out the instruments. It's a totality, a summation of the entirety of the speaker build. The only thing that I can say is that the backing vocals definitely separated out from the main vocals, which was really cool. And there is some things that I heard in the speaker that I haven't heard before in recordings. Everclear, Santa Monica, the re-recorded version, which is outstanding. If you haven't heard that song, and you're a child of the 90s, please go listen to Santa Monica by Everclear, the re-recorded version. There is a point where he comes in with a guitar, and I think there is a dip somewhere in the mid-range because the guitar came back really full and forceful and yummy. There was definitely certain frequencies that came through a little bit more powerful than others. And finally, Johnny Cash, God is gonna cut you down. Not didn't come through as baritone as I've heard on other speakers. Again, a little cool. That's kind of the reoccurring theme of this speaker in the mid-range. A little bit cool. Very good though. Very separated out. Believable. Not cool enough that it doesn't sound natural. Good. It's very good. It just has a certain personality. Let's talk about treble. The speaker has a redesigned tweeter as well, or a redesigned way that it's implemented into the cabinet. I think it's completely decoupled from the cabinet. The other reoccurring theme about this speaker is the amount of separation. On Africa, the Weezer cover, 
The symbols were unbelievably separated out. But again, on Santa Monica by Everclear, there is a point where he's hitting the symbol, he's hitting the crash symbol on every beat. So one, two, three, four. So he's hitting that. But at the same time, I think he's also hitting the hi-hat, which is opened up a little bit. And I never had heard that separation. To me, on other systems, it just sounded like one cymbal hit. But there was definitely some something going on with the hi-hat and the crash cymbal at the same time. I had never heard that before. So it was really interesting to kind of lean in and just hear all the separation. As far as air goes, Alice in Chains, you got me wrong. It gave a very large, it translated the space of that room where it was recorded very well. I have no complaints about the treble here. I think it's about as good as you're gonna get. So what are my final thoughts? At $900, it's a, that's expensive for a speaker with a five inch woofer. But what I will say is this speaker is very, very refined. It takes some of the styling cues from the 3000 series, like the 3020. The enclosure is not nearly as polished as something like the Model 30, which comes in at $1,300. The Model 30, I don't think has as much personality. If I had to choose one speaker between the 5020 and the Model 30, I would choose the 5020. It just seems like it has a bit more personality than the Model 30, and it's a lot cheaper too. This reminds me a bit of the ELAC Unify 2.0. Maybe a little bit less bass, but you also don't have to worry about burning this thing in for 200 hours before it starts sounding good. I think the top end is a little bit more, it seems a little bit more natural than the ELAC Unify does. Mid-range, however, sounds pretty similar. And front to back, the ELAC Unify 2.0, one of the best speakers I've heard. And the Q Acoustics 5020, again, is one of the better speakers that I've heard. For near field, I think this could be an end game speaker for a lot of people, if they like the sonic characteristics. And what the sonic characteristic here is, it's flat. There's a bit of a dip somewhere in the mid-range that, I don't know, leans things out a little bit, especially with male vocals, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a very linear speaker from, a, it's flat from a frequency standpoint. It's gonna play well with all genres of music. And if you shove this one up against the wall, then I think you're gonna have probably enough bass for most applications. Again though, if you want that bottom octave, you're gonna have to add a subwoofer. The speaker is also transparent enough, and I never really understood what that meant. But basically, it is, it's not putting so much of its own personality on the source material that it's changing everything, so not everything's gonna sound good on this. Most of the recordings that I listened to on this sounded great, until I got to Demonoid Phenomena by Rob Zombie, and it sounded terrible. So this speaker is going to give you the limitations of the recording. If it's poorly recorded, you're gonna hear it through the speaker. This speaker excels at instrument separation and forward to aft or front to back soundstage. It, everything's separated out. It's really, it's really something else. And it's a little bit subtle. You're not gonna hear it at first, but after you've listened to the speaker for a while, it's pretty amazing just how separated out everything is. It's remarkable, one of the best speakers I've heard when it comes to that. As far as amp pairings, I think the XPA Gen 2 was a good pairing with it. I think that amp is a little bit, if you want a little bit more personality, you want something, an amp that's a little bit more robust on the bottom, I think the Schitt Lear Tier, I was gonna mix up, Schitt Tier Monoblocks, I think was the best pairing for my personal taste. The XPA and the A1s from Emotiva were very neutral, but because the speaker is very neutral, I liked a little bit of oomph, but you can also get that from tone controls or an EQ if you have it. Speaker's fantastic. I couldn't say enough about this speaker. If you know what you're getting into, if you know kind of the way that this thing sounds through the mid-range and that it's not gonna go super deep on the bass and it's not gonna slap you in the face with the bass, but what is there is superbly separated, then this is probably the speaker for you. $900, I think it's a little bit pricey, but I think it's worth every penny. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. They usually have a trial period. Even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. And finally, you can use the thanks button down at the bottom of the video next to the share button. Click. 
Give me a couple of bucks. Buy me a cup of coffee, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe run on out and get your new Q Acoustics 5020 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <laughs>